49 seconds of logos. I was convinced these screams had to be here for a reason other than just being creepy, so I reversed them, raised the pitch, overlaid a filter of Madagascan whale song, and then played them through a 1981 Betamax player and found that it's still just vague noises. I guess just to make sure we knew this was a horror movie. 8831. Listen, I regularly forget what movie I'm sinning as I'm sinning it, so I know human memory can suck, but she is literally reading the number and getting it wrong. How do you memorize a thing wrong as you are reading it? This texted Airbnb-like agreement says the key left for renters is the only key in existence, which will surely be important later, but mostly just makes me wonder what happens if there's a fire, or if they just lose this one key on accident and a child is locked inside. <laughs> what do you guys think Marcus did? Because he did something to get dismissed that quickly. I'm guessing she caught him f***ing his breakfast. I mean, she can absolutely make this phone call from the car, right? The place where it isn't raining, dark, and the opening scene to a horror movie? And... I'm on the porch and it's pouring the rain and there is no key in the lockbox. This is kind of why hotels exist, because there's a system in place, even if the key to your room is lost or doesn't work. Personal rentals are kind of a free-for-all, really, since they all have different agreements, and I bet even some of them say, if you arrive and can't find a key and it's raining, you'll be charged a $500 natural shower fee. What am I supposed to do? Why don't you come inside and we'll call these idiots. Tess is understandably suspicious of Bill and this entire situation, but her solution is to immediately go into the house before asking for any evidence that he is who he says he is, or at least isn't who she's worried he could be. No! Didn't you hear the ominous thunder? Starting a sentence and then waiting four minutes and 56 seconds to finish it. She asked this guy to prove he had a reservation. He agreed, but then she starts wandering around the house for maximum jump scare potential and general misunderstandings. Here. Ah! Oh, you lazy ass, jump scaring, trope whoring, sudden shrieking, gas mongering, fker, f you. That looks right to me. He hands her a cell phone to prove he's legit and she sees an image or a video or whatever and just believes it. And I don't know what the protocol is for this. Me neither. The protocol should be for Tess to get the f out of here, get a refund, and sleep anywhere that doesn't have a total f***ing stranger in the next room. But I'm guessing she will do the opposite of all those things. What are you gonna do? I have my phone. Make some calls. I mean, I don't know if you've got a great look at this neighborhood, but it's not... It's, I don't think you should be sitting out there by yourself this late. Oh boy, it sure is a shame there's a magical yet unseen dome around the neighborhood preventing her from driving to literally anywhere that isn't here and then calling around. Look, the only reason the options are limited to stay parked outside or stay here with it chapter nope is because she's in a horror movie. Tess, that's a pretty name. Sure does feel like Keith went to the pretending to not be a serial killer while still talking and acting like a serial killer school of horror movie fake outery with Professor Liam Schreiber, doesn't it? Somebody left out a bottle of wine here. Uh, with a ribbon on it, like a housewarming thing. Are we sure it wasn't an apology for putting the TV in the most stupid ass position that you could imagine while still having it in the intended room? Who's gonna be able to watch that thing without inducing chronic neck trauma? There's a convention in town. What? Yeah, there's like some huge medical thing. I don't, I don't think you're gonna be able to get a room tonight. Yeah, but every room in every hotel? In all of Detroit? And even if that's true, Tess gives up after making one phone call. Why don't you just crash here? You take the bedroom, and I'll sleep out here on the couch. I mean, I, I don't know what else there is to do. So many things! All the things! Billions of things that don't involve sharing a house with a stranger! What is going on here? I can take the couch. Look, let's just get this out of the way. If I showed up at an Airbnb and there was already somebody inside that said they had also rented it, and they offered to let me inside or maybe share it, I would call the f***ing cops! This is the reddest flag that ever red flag! Someone or something is going to eat, assault, or kill you! Get the f*** out of there! Snooping! But I thought, you know, you might want some of this, but if I open it while you weren't here, that, um... And, um, this guy goes so far out of his way to not open the wine until she's here and explain that to her that I'm confident that this wine is poison. I'm really sorry about all this. What the f are you sorry for? Hey, King. It's not your fault. You're just as put out as me. That's the thing, actually. You don't seem put out one bit. And the fact that she's still acting like you aren't a creepy robot douchebag tells me she has terrible situational awareness skills. I'm actually one of the founders of the Lion Tamers. You're kidding. Nope. He's not. Tess has managed to be double booked with one of the potential subjects of a very niche documentary that she just happens to be interviewing for. An utterly universe-bending coincidence that, by the way, has nothing to do with the wider plot. If I had been the one that checked in first and you showed up late at night... What, you wouldn't have let me in? Hell no, I wouldn't have let you in. Do you think I'm crazy? How is that any smarter than him being there first and you not only walking in the door but agreeing to stay the night and drink wine? How is that safer? I can sleep on anything. Kind of a weird flex, actually. Actually, definitely doesn't make me trust you more. But also, what about caffeine pills? Could you sleep while high on caffeine pills? Bet you couldn't. 
Oh, f*** you, movie. You presented all these close-ups to show us how diligent Tess is at door-locking just so we can, what, think she's a dumbass for not doing so when she's at her most vulnerable? She wakes and finds her bedroom door is open and I could have a heart attack and die from not surprised. Instead of turning on the lights and screaming, Keith, she decides to sneak up on him and gently touch him as he sleeps. Falling for a guy just because he didn't kill you and he left you a note. After showing you basically her POV the entire film, the movie decides you don't need to hear how her job interview goes, which is weird. Two cents for being weird. So, where are you staying while you're in town? Uh, it's in, uh, Brightmoor. What? Are you kidding? No, you shouldn't be there. An Airbnb in Brightmoor. Charlotte is a terrible person, right? She's flabbergasted when she hears where Tess is staying, but doesn't clarify exactly why or insists that Tess stays somewhere less murdery or even help her find an alternative with her clearly superior local knowledge. Either she's just being extremely snobby or has a genuine concern for Tess's safety that she apparently just dismisses. I did try and find somewhere else, but uh, there's like a convention in town or something, and I, I, I have a roommate, so. Okay, she didn't get murdered in her sleep, but did she really just promote Stranger Danger Keith to roommate the proves I won't get murdered in a shady neighborhood for this discussion? Hey, little girl! Come here! This guy will end up wanting to help Tess, but right now he decides to approach her in the sketchiest way possible. Hey, little girl, come here is a terrible way to communicate. Hey, there's a demon in that basement that wants to make you its baby. Also, on what planet does Tess believe it'll be faster to run to the house, type in the four-digit code, grab the key, unlock the door, and get inside rather than taking two steps back and re-entering her car? Come out that house! No way! Come out that house! And then he just gives up? Why can't he warn her about the monster through the door? Is he holding back because he knows we haven't had that reveal yet? Someone went to the trouble of spray painting death from below instead of stay the f out of 476. Man, you gotta love doors that work exclusively on horror physics. What the f is closing it? There's no supernatural entity in this movie. So did the monster team up with that asshole ghost from Paranormal Activity or what? Problem here is that this secret door that leads to a secret walkway, that leads to a secret dungeon, that hides your secret kidnapping and human breeding fetish rooms is only as secret as this very obviously not secret rope. Nope. And in this context, nope means nope until I've MacGyvered a mirror to give me 5% more lighting. Has she not ever heard the proverb that curiosity killed the girl that was trapped in the basement? And I can't just be running off in a panic because there's a room downstairs with a bed and a bucket. Tess will get mad at Keith for his reaction, but her exact words were... There was a bed, okay. and a camera, and a bucket. That could be anything from a renovation project to some TikTok thing where you live in a room for 30 days to see if you lose your mind. Only in a horror movie would you describe this situation in the most mundane way possible and still expect people to believe you. Can you just wait up here in case I get locked inside too? Tess doesn't say, no problem, my dude. Allow me to just prop this door open with a chair or sofa and you may have at it. Meanwhile, I'll be in my car getting the f out of here. Peace. Once again, f this door and the possessed hinges it swung in on. Mere minutes after being ready to leave the house altogether, she is now back down near the 8mm room. All because Keith didn't respond to her calls, and apparently she has some need to make sure Keith isn't dead or something. I honestly don't know. There is a third basement, and she's gonna go down there like an idiot. I mean, this is the point where you go and try the police again, right? There's no way she can think that going in there is a good idea. Like, even if she's seen this exact movie and knows she survived, she still shouldn't go in there after him. No! Also, no. Did I just know my own no? Yes! Also, yes. Why is her phone flashlight so sh It extends maybe three feet in front of her in any direction like a little bitch of a flashlight. I turn on my phone's flashlight and neighbors 500 yards away start screaming at me to turn it off. Point is, her flashlight should be much more useful than this lame-ass crap. Couldn't she have at least gone back for a knife or a shard of wood or any kind of weapon? Those are cages for humans and she should leave. So, I have to blur all this for the dainty YouTube advertisers, but suddenly a naked cave lady shows up, bashes Keith's skull into the cave wall, and screeches at Tess. And that is a lot to take in inside 10 seconds. Apparently, Megan Maddox has contacted the network through her lawyer, and she's made a very serious accusation against you. Kudos to the movie for giving us a hell of a non sequitur. But at the same time, what the f*** is going on? It's your mortgage here that's killing you. You're saying I have to sell my house? He's not saying anything, but the fact that you need to sell your house is obvious. God, if you weren't already accused of rape, I would think less of you right now. You're in Detroit, Michigan? Yeah. What? AJ, you aren't supposed to leave the state. Isn't that something that you, his f***ing attorney, should have told him, oh, I don't know, YESTERDAY!
After seeing the car in the driveway, wouldn't you assume there's at least a chance someone is in the house and check the one place that has a light on? Is someone staying here at the moment? The next many minutes will be AJ looking around the house and figuring out that people have left their shit behind. Now, if we'd started the movie with this, I might be engaged in the mystery and be able to empathize with the alleged asshole. But since we already know exactly what happened, I just find myself waiting for us to get back to either the courtroom drama or the mummy meets the descent. I actually don't mind which as long as it isn't this. Nice, really? Ruining my career and reputation isn't nice either. I've got no idea what's going on, except for the fact that AJ is almost certainly an abuser who takes really good care of his teeth. We f we did f okay? Right. She just took some convincing is all. That's okay, it. Okay, but what the f*** does that mean, though? guy that the rapist is defending himself to would be excellent at cinema sins. Here's an Airbnb where the hired designer said, f*** it, some paintings don't need to be mounted on the wall. Just laying that shit on top of the credenza. Somebody here? Hello? I'm assuming this is the mother making this noise, so what the f*** is she doing? Is she just hanging around down there waiting to scare the sh out of AJ? I mean, he's been asleep all night, so why the f*** hasn't she dragged his ass downstairs already? Why is anything in this movie happening the way it's happening? Hide in my basement? I'm a f***ing man, I'll f*** you up. Feels like we've spent several hours with AJ at this point, and nothing we've seen so far tells us that he's the stab and intruder with a kitchen knife type over the call the police and run the f*** away type. Why doesn't the door close behind him like it did for everyone else that came down here? There's a reason it was propped open with a chair when AJ arrived. Can underground rooms be listed as square footage? <laughs> Okay, I do kind of love how the movie turns one innocent person's nightmare basement into another oblivious dumbass's investment opportunity. However, as hilarious as it is, there is no f***ing way that he is taking any kind of accurate measurements with that f***ing tape measure and a flashlight. He is going all the way into the heart of the nope dungeon out of a greed so strong he has danger blinders on. He could literally only see the extra square footage right now. Oh, of course, he dropped the f***ing flashlight, and of course it breaks in a way that means it starts randomly strobing. Apparently we used up all our imagination on the sudden Justin Longness of it all. Manager to check out for the price check. Manager? Manager? The manager of a grocery store has a lot more important sh** to do than a price check. Clerks and baggers can handle that sh** just fine. 106.9, Detroit's home of the rock. You in the market for a used car but don't have good credit? This is like in Grand Theft Auto games when I'm stalking a murder victim and just listening to the radio while I... Wait, I may have said too much. Why didn't this guy take off his fake-ass Carlos uniform before driving home and talking to the neighbor? He seems so careful about every single movie made up until this one. On the list of things I wish I hadn't seen in 2022, this came somewhere between the cleaning probe footage of my great-grandmother's infected ear canal and smile. Don't you see? She just wants you to be her baby. Just? Fucking just? Baby. Me, this is the most disturbing shit I've seen since that fucking skeletal bear in Annihilation. I would remove a sin, but I'm too creeped out. She just dragged a full-grown Justin Long up and out of what looks to be a seven or eight foot hole in the ground. How does living in a hole for 40 years gain you super strength? This is fucking gross. It's not scary as much as it's fucking gross. Remember that guy in the basement from the other movie who had a semen-filled turkey baster? Yeah, he's still grosser than this woman, but it's close. But also, both that movie and this movie take place in long-abandoned Detroit neighborhoods where one person still lives and has a creepy basement. So now the basement door is closed behind him. This is again an issue after it not mattering the first time he went down there and then came back up and googled square footage facts and then went back down. That's really fucking convenient. You want to go back in there? Ain't no help in here. We, we can't leave him. What if I told you he was a creepy rapist? Would that change your mind? You should have never went in that house to begin with. Don't you say that like she should have fucking known there was a dungeon in there with a monster collecting adults as babies, you fucking dick. And she ain't even the worst thing that's in there. Holy sh**. Kirk Cameron is in there too? She will kill him! I need to help him! I think if he learns to enjoy the feedings, he will probably live. The naked mama backs away slowly because she knows that what's behind that door is the thing that's worse than her down here, and my money is on it being a thousand duck-sized horses. I've been held prisoner. So you don't have ID? Note to all future victims of kidnapping. Always keep a copy of your driver's license tucked up into one of your body's cavities so the police will believe you if you ever escape. Water. Okay, yeah? I guess he thinks this old man is just another victim down here, but why does he think Feral Nell backed away from this room? <laughs> now she's breaking and entering just to get back into the kill house. Did she at least find a gun or a pipe or a chain or some kind of weapon beyond just her personal vengeance? What is wrong with you? Look, man, don't judge. An actor's gotta make money. They can't all be hits. Sometimes you gotta take a Barbarian or an R.I.P.D. 2 Rise of the Dam to make those ends meet. Tragically, the car stopped working just after running Nudie Trudy into the vinyl siding, which you would think would have killed her immediately, but... Hello? 
Of course, AJ shoots her because, well, who can blame him for firing first and asking questions later after what he's been through? But still, party foul, dude. She's not there. What? She's, she's gone. She survived a fucking Jeep to the torso? What am I missing here? Did Frank have a baby with She-Hulk? Now the seemingly homeless dude living in a wasteland will rescue them and take them into shelter, and this is just a quiet place part two. Also, has he just been watching this shit go down for 40 years? Okay, I can see the police not believing him, but how in all of that time has he not come up with a better tactic than screaming, hey, little girl, if his goal is to save people? He used to bring women down there, and then he started making babies with them, and babies with the babies. And you make a copy of a copy of a copy, and you end up with something like that. Sure is f***ing lucky that they bumped into the one homeless genealogist with a subspecialty in superpowers brought about by incest that just so happens to be in the area and able to fill them in like this. I don't know if I'm a bad person. You are. But I might be. You are. I might be a bad person. You are. Or maybe I'm, I'm a good person who just did a bad thing. You are not. I'm right here, we're safe. Aw, he doesn't realize he's in a horror movie. And she's gonna make it through the night. Oh, so he's a f***ing first responder too? He doesn't even know what's wrong with Tess. This guy is the f***ing situational utility knife of homeless people. How do you know she can't get in here? Sh I've been living in this place more than 15 years, and she ain't never came in this mother 15 years? If he's only been here 15 years, then how the f*** does he know that Frank has been buffalo billing women for 40? To escape the evil birthday suit corpse, they decide to climb up the steps of a water tower thing, because that leads to so many bailout options. You're gone! Oh, f***ing f*** you right in the convenient f***ing fumbling f***ery. If you don't want him to have the gun, just say it ran out of ammo instead of this sh There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to f***ing go! Well, duh, dickwad. Why did you ever think climbing up here was a smart idea? Hey! Don't! Come get your baby! I know you didn't think this guy was gonna break good, did you? <laughs> but also, holy sh! the unclothed undead woman threw herself off the tower after this one particular girl. How did AJ know or even think that would happen? Get the absolute f out of here. Let's say that this water tower is 150 feet, which it f***ing isn't, by the way. It's probably 50 at most, but if it was 150 feet, it would take three seconds to hit the deck. So in less than three seconds, she manages to jump off, accelerate past Tess, who's already mid-fall, grab her, and turn the f*** around. How do you gain the ability to travel through f***ing time by living in a basement for 40 years? Naked Nana somehow survived the fall and then squeezes AJ's neck and gouges out his eyes. And it really feels like this movie has fewer rules than an episode of Animaniacs. This movie has jumped the shark so many times I don't know why they didn't intersperse these credits with a fucking blooper reel. You know, the mother high-fiving Tess or squirting everybody with fake breast milk. I think anything would work better than, well, Tess walking. Why is this movie called Barbarian? No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! You sold us a cake with that hair on. I want to play a game. Oh, you gotta be right kidding me. Uh, I need to use the bathroom. Yeah, 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 uh, of course. It's uh, just down the hall to your left. Okay. I'll be right back. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. I'm good, but you go ahead. But you've also bested my Spaniard, which means you must have studied. And in studying, you must have learned that man is mortal. Why are you so into Pino? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's a hard grape to grow, as you know, right? <laughs> Come up here, Keith! Hello up there. I seem to have fallen down a cliff. I'm still alive, but I'm very badly injured. Yeah, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I don't know if it's a demon or a devil. Yeah. Hey, listen, real quick, while I've got you here, what are you guys doing November 17th? I've been living in this place more than 15 years, and she ain't never came in this mother Surprise, mother Back was That wasn't flying. That was falling with style.